Well, the season ain't done yet. Let's talk about it on Locked On UCLA. You are Locked On UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody. It's your favorite host, Zach Anderson. Yoxheimer, thanks for checking in with Locked On UCLA. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcasts. Also live on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. In the meantime, this episode of Locked On UCLA is brought to you by Sling TV. Sling is something for everyone, especially when it comes to college football coverage. Massive lineup of games. We have ACC, Big Ten, Pac-12, and SEC. You can get the games you want all season long on Sling. Just check it out. Sling, the TV you love, for a price you'll love. Try it today. In the meantime, the season ain't over for UCLA. Of course, the Bruins coming off their first defeat of the season, but with the schedule that laid out the way it was, the record it probably speaks for itself. Something along the five and two, six and one was very attainable for UCLA. At this point of the season, UCLA has played two of their three marquee games. Two of the three, we all know what they are, but let's revisit them again. Utah at home in Eugene with even more stakes than maybe we all would have anticipated. And then the USC matchup later this year in the Rose Bowl. So you get two of those three at home and then the tough one, the toughest road game, which would arguably be the toughest road game all season long, regardless of the year, barring a big non-conference matchup. So far, the Bruins one and one when it comes to their two marquee games coming into the year. I remember I was on the Pac-12 the Locked On Pac-12, the season, the Locked On Sports Pac-12 preseason kind of insider talk, what I was looking at the Bruins. And it came down to there's three games during their set schedule that will truly define the UCLA season. They got through the non-conference unscathed. Again, Washington rose up for that big kind of nationally recognizable game. UCLA knocked them off in a short week. Beat Utah, get the fans energized. Two weeks of national media building up the Bruins, everybody, including myself, building up the Bruins, which they still are a very solid ball club, but they fell a little bit short against the team that's rocking on all cylinders in Oregon. They can get the Ducks again down in December in Las Vegas. They can try and battle them one more time and show, and show all right, maybe with some adjustments on a neutral site, something can happen. But regardless, this may be first, maybe only, whatever it may be, game against Oregon should not define the season. UCLA still has that marquee matchup against USC and some very key Pac-12 matchups against teams UCLA may, may only face for the next few times before they move to the Big Ten. There's only so many more matchups they will have against Stanford, whether they renew it, everybody expands in some way, some way, some way, shape, or form. For UCLA, they've got so many more things to do, including Stanford this week. We'll get to our preview Later on in the week, starting on the Wednesday episode for Locked On UCLA, where we also recap the Pac-12 basketball media days. In the meantime, just remember, UCLA fans, it, it ain't over yet. UCLA still has plenty of things to play for. While they are technically in their own driver, they're still in the driver's seat, kind of, for the most part, into a berth to the Pac-12 title game. There's still some crazy things. Whereas if Utah decides to go into Oregon and mess things up, there could be a way where there's three Pac-12 teams all tied atop the Pac-12 standings, and they would have all played each other, and one would have beaten the other, which kind of would be interesting. We'll see what happens, not saying if that happens, but for the most part, if Oregon beats Utah and UCLA wins out, then the Bruins control their own destiny, and they can still get to the Pac-12 title game. There's still the talk out of practice, out of camp, saying, hey, we still have, in their belief, in their minds, says the, from the team saying, hey, we believe in possibly still with an outside shot at the playoff. And the Bruins technically do. And while I'm not saying we're not going to be dumb about this, there's still so many things that would have to go right and so many things that have to go wrong. But the Bruins are still in play for a New Year's Six Bowl. If for some reason they went out and still are left out of the Pac-12 title game, 
they are still very much in play for their first quote-unquote Pac-12 title championship in the Pac-12 era, even though it would be their third appearance since the Pac-12 expanded to become the Pac-12 and the Pac-10. They're looking for their first Rose Bowl in quite some time for UCLA standards. They play at home. They want to get to the Rose Bowl game in January 2nd, 2023. At the very least, we want to have eight claps in the Rose Parade and getting ready and hyped up to set in the new year right on the second day of 2023. And that's all in line. And there's still the big, you know, there's still many things to go right for UCLA. There's still so many things to go right. There's no need to panic. And despite the rushing numbers and you look at the Oregon game and you say, all right, what went wrong? The defense, the offense, a good day, just not as efficient. You just, UCLA just ran into a, a, a wall, a brick wall, whatever it may be, whatever happened in Eugene. It was a team that did, for the most part, what UCLA does better and took it right to them and just played smash mouth football and took it to the Bruins, which is what UCLA has been doing all year long. This Stanford game and this Arizona State game will truly be a nice one-two little punch for the Bruins to try and get themselves back on the right footing, a home game against a team with a losing record, but still trending upward are the Cardinal, and an ASU team that will be very tough and on the road in Tempe for what could be a national audience late night, you know, Pac-12 after dark can always go crazy, as you know, in this conference. It's a nice one-two to really solidify UCLA standing. It's not just a bowl-eligible team or a team who missed out technically in a bowl last year with Chip Kelly because the game was canceled. UCLA still has a chance to really get themselves into what can be from a good season to being a great season and build themselves for something fantastic. One loss will not define the season, even if it is. It happens to be the only loss of the year or the only loss they sustain in Pac-12 play, whether it be the regular season or whatnot. There's still so much to play for for the Bruins, and you just can't look at them in the eye and say, hey, they're horrible. Well, yes, there are things to fix. And, well, the dream was fun, and we all love the dream of the 6-0, and potential 7-0 and start. That did not happen. And UCLA still, with many things a little sinker on defense, with their worst deform- performance defensively of the year, they had shown some signs of improvement from years past. But it's different from improving to being good enough to win a game like that against Oregon. It's different to be a good offensive juggernaut, and it's different to when you need to win a high-scoring game back and forth to be able to do so on the road in an environment like they did against Oregon. And they've proven they can go toe-for-toe, still score 30 points per game, do what they need to do to win most games, but now it's the building block. The second half of the schedule where you grind down, everybody's beaten up, injured, battered, and bruised, and this is where UCLA, as I've kind of been recapping and talking about all these last couple of recaps following the Oregon game, this is what will truly define the season, how you build yourself back up, how you come back, you're not smiling and do it all the talk. We love Dorian Thompson Robinson. He loves to chirp. He loves to talk and build his team up. We need to build this team up. And how do you do that after a loss? You know, it's different after a win, and it's different after a loss when you were dominated on the road. And here you go with an opportunity to still go out and take it and prove they're a good ball club and possibly, likely, but possibly get a rematch against that team and try to get a second say. How that goes, I don't know but they do have that opportunity in front of them to truly define their season, however it may be here in 2022. But for, you know, football talk, well, it's, basketball's creeping up on us. What does that mean? Some polls, some media days, some games, secret scrimmages. Well, let's talk about it. But first, let's talk to you about Simply Safe. For Simply Safe, as everybody knows, Athletes rise and fall in the ranks, but when it comes to saving money, Simply Safe always stays on top. And right now, you can save big with Simply Safe Home Security, giving listeners 40% off their advanced security system. Simply Safe was just named the best home security of 2022 by U.S. News. You'll love it because at Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing it mat- that matters. With 27%. 24-7 professional monitoring, when a threat's detected, they can promptly contact you and dispatch first responders to your home, even if you're not at home or unavailable to respond. They blanket your home with protection, advanced sensors in every room, and can instantly detect a threat, And whether it's fires, floods, or other threats to your home, they can detect you 
when the threat is real. Don't miss this chance to save big when you can protect your home with the best. Get 40% off your order when you visit simplysafe.com slash locked on college. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. We keep on rolling here with locked on UCLA at Zach Anderson. Yoxheimer here. We talked football that first segment. Now we're going to build this remaining part of the show talking about basketball. And whether you've been waiting for me to talk basketball or you wish you could push it off two more weeks in some aspects, we're going to talk about it anyway. Because while the football team's doing good, there are some extremely high expectations for the Bruins on the hardwood. As for a week there, a little brief moment, both teams, whether it be preseason or during the bye for the football team, were ranked in the top 10. And let's talk about some preseason accolades, right? We're starting to see the all Pac-12 preseason team coming out. These polls, whether it be the AP Top 25, the USA Today Coaches Poll Top 25, these are all slowly building to the eventual media day on October 26th for the Pac-12 basketball front. And UCLA can get some quotes, get us all more excited talking about basketball in addition to enjoying the rest of the football slate when November hits and everything just goes bonkers. Okay, UCLA, while they haven't released exactly what the media thinks and what everybody kind of thinks, whether it be this team, that team, whoever it be in the Pac-12, that people will give it. It's UCLA who comes in in the AP preseason top 25 poll, ranked number eight. The coaches poll actually gives them more respect, being ranked number seven. And in the Pac-12 preseason all first team, you have the likes of Tiger Campbell and Jaime Hawkins Jr. And you have the likes of those two being on the first team Very experienced, very impressive UCLA careers about to come to a close, hopefully in spectacular, spectacular fashion, as we all hope. So all the veterans getting their love. In the meantime, you go deeper down the Pac-12 preseason polls. You have Amari Bailey, the youngster coming in, the freshman from Sierra Canyon, getting an honorable mention. Sometimes I don't always give the love to the freshman up and down those preseason polls. So he gets the honorable mention. And when I went back to my to the what what are the expectations for the UCLA team there's a lot of freshmen on this team there's a lot of youngsters some youth and guys who are going to need to step up for UCLA whether they played a little bit a couple years ago Mac Etienne redshirt freshman coming off injury a year ago you have Mark Bailey coming there's just so much youth that can come in and be exciting and just knock the doors off blow them off and just take the expectations through the roof or the ceiling, as whatever Michael Jordan said when North Carolina won their title back then. The ceiling is the roof, whatever it is. For UCLA, they're trying to blow those expectations, get through the roof, knock them to the sky, and prove that these freshmen with Mari Bailey and also veteran Bruin Jalen Clark, he's on the honorable mention list when it comes to the likes of the LPAC 12 preseason poll. So four Bruins getting love, two separate polls showing UCLA as top 10 teams, even the coaches, giving a slight nod to UCLA, despite not too many Pac-12 teams being acknowledged in this USA Today coaches poll. You have Arizona at 13. You have Oregon at 21, which, remember, UCLA plays Oregon in that weird two-game early portion of the Pac-12 schedule. And SC's receiving votes not even in it. A little bit different. But UCLA... Looking on the outside, looking in for the preseason, looking into the season. Everybody's giving them all this love, and they just got to go on the court and prove it. They just got to do it. We're all excited. There's well, whatever quotes Mick Cronin and whatever quotes Mick Cronin and company give out before the season, whatever it is, before they take on Sac State, November seventh, opening night at eight thirty Pacific in Poly Pavilion. In the end, it's practice, build up, an exhibition, yes, and all that building in. In the meantime, the excitement is going to be real for the Bruins. And why is there more reason to be excited? Well, some rumors leaked, as you may have heard, but we'll probably now acknowledge them about this secret scrimmage. The not-so-secret scrimmage against the top-20 team in San Diego State. But even though it may be someone's job to keep it, you know, secret, it leaked out, stats are there, we'll talk about it after we tell you 
about LinkedIn jobs. And LinkedIn jobs, well, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have the access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you should check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Their screening questions, which are simple tools that can help you make it easier to focus on candidates with the right skills and experience to prioritize who you want to hire and interview immediately. That's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality quality hires against versus and whatever it may be, leading competition. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, we've been teasing it. We've been building it. UCLA, they are top 10 in the country, and they were able to get a closed-door secret, quote-unquote, scrimmage against San Diego State on the road in Viejas Arena. And while some of these things are a little bit more private, secretive about the results, stats, whatever, it seems like this UCLA secret scrimmage against San Diego State was not so secretive. Came out out of the San Diego Union Tribune. They actually interviewed the San Diego State head coach about this in Brian Dutcher. And all right, it happened late on Sunday, a couple days ago, I believe October 23rd. And it was UCLA, whether you go by the eight standing, the number eighth ranked Bruins versus the 19th ranked San Diego State Aztecs, a team in the last two years in the Aztecs who have made it to the NCAA tournament, posted good records in the COVID weird season in 2021 or last year in the 21 to 22 campaign, made it to the tournament, but maybe some disappointing results with first round exits. However, it may be it's San Diego state who is returning for their starters from a team who I believe was 23 and nine made it to the mountain West title game with a lot of mountain West teams doing well last year on the men's side. And they eventually lost in the first round to Creighton in an eight, nine matchup in overtime. So they got a lot of got four returning starters for a very solid defensive unit last year for San Diego State. It was the Bruins who went down there. The reports were Noah Dembona. He did not have an injury designation. He did not play Mac NTN unavailable. Will McClendon unavailable. Those two coming off of ACL injuries. Even the Bruins overall, they didn't use they even used a slew of walk-ons coming in to get five minute windows. And eventually what happened? UCLA jumped out to an 18-2 lead as reported, led by as many as 18 points in the second half, so it's told, and built its way into a win, 89, but wait for it, San Diego State, 87, and the Bruins had to hold on for dear life late. And as we already mentioned, the Pac-12 preseason first-teamers, Tiger Campbell, Jaime Jaquez, they combined for 57 points, 10 threes made, Tiger apparently put in 31. You had Jaquez who put in 26. The Bruins shooting 45% from three. 50% from the field against the San Diego State team. Yes, closed door scrimmage. Rotations will be different. They will not be the same in-game, which allows these coaches to make adjustments against competition that is not your own team, scrimmaging against your own team in practice. You go out, get another body. But the Bruins, they were shooting the three ball well when it when it came to being, all right, they went into somebody's house on the road. Yes, a little different when you have 12,000 screaming Aztec faithful fans down there in San Diego. But regardless, if the Bruins are going to shoot that well, put up points. And apparently, Amari Bailey did well doing all those things, forcing turnovers against San Diego State. It was nice to see they went on the road against a team with a couple of transfers with those four returning starters. So I believe a TCU transfer. Everything mixed in with an Aztec team that is predicted in the preseason polls over with the Mountain West to be the number one team in the Mountain West, usually a very solid basketball conference coming off a very interesting year last year on the good side. And for the Bruins, well, they came out and apparently they impressed, jumping out to big leads, big lead late, and had to hold on for dear life late. So that is good, you know, prono- prognostication going forward for UCLA. But still, we talked about a Dembona, and it was earlier reported where Mac- Mick Cronin, I don't know, Mac, thinking of Mac Etienne, but Mick Cronin, himself head coach for the Bruins, had already been touting up Bona as one of these guys to be 
a very exciting player out of Nigeria. Well, he was unavailable. You had Will McClendon. Didn't see anything about Abramo Zanka, much mentioned as the Italian freshman who comes in already in, in his 20s. One of the freshmen who came in, in the later part of the international recruiting for UCLA at the landscape they've started to branch out to. But for UCLA, they even use walk-ons due to some availability issues, and they had some five-minute shifts. Evan Manchikian, Raw reports, and just different guys coming in. And for UCLA, they came through, were able to get the win. 51% approximately, while also shooting the likes of forty, nearly 46% from three. And they went and interviewed the San Diego State coach, I'm assuming McCronin, probably from what I have seen, looking around with no comments. Most coaches like to ignore, you know, they don't like to always talk about scrimmages. In the end, it's how your team is built and prepared for March. And generally, the season is always looked upon at how you do in March. Last year, remember UCLA in their 27-8 and campaign going 15-5 and in Pac-12 play. Averaged 75 points per game while allowing 64 points. They did allow 87 to a San Diego State team who, even though they added some transfers, obviously teams change from year to year. San Diego State couldn't score to save their lives last year, which was the difference in them being truly successful when they had one of the better defenses in the country. UCLA, all right, they had to hold on with their bevy of talent and a lot of guys that probably won't see the floor during the year, which is the case in scrimmages, seeing who can test the waters in D1 ball early. UCLA last year, 35% from three, making just under seven a game. So that's good when you're facing a team in San Diego State who, if you go by their numbers last year, a lot of returning starters, remember, as I keep reminding you, four out of five, San Diego State only allowed 30%, only allowed 30% made threes from their opponents last year. So UCLA against a very stout team, put up 89, a team that's going to go work on their defense going forward are the Aztecs. And for the Bruins, they put up points, said, all right, let's go, jumped out of the gates, and looked impressive, which gets us excited and ready to go for UCLA basketball. And while not too many marquee matchups at home, still many games to keep an eye on for the Bruins as we count down the days. Yes, there's an exhibition in between now and November 7th, but until Sac State comes to town, we count down the days for UCLA basketball when November will be a slew of game recaps, previews for basketball, football, and everything in between as we count down the move to the Big Ten. But UCLA would love to have another Pac-12 title and a national title in between now and then before they move to a new conference. So remember, Bruins, take down the Aztecs, top 20 team in a closed-door scrimmage. Highly contested physical Bruins score. They do well. Tiger Campbell over 30 points. Hawkes with 26 and they shot the three ball well from all accounts. That's how we get you excited. In the meantime, for your second listen, after thank for making thank you for making Locked On UCLA your first listen, go check out Locked On Sports Today, another one of those Locked On podcasts on the Locked On Network. We've got the biggest stories of the day with instant reactions, big recaps, and the take of the day. Yes, the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, whether it be YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's available there for Locked On Sports Day. Make that your second listen. In the meantime, for Locked On UCLA fans, get your hands in the air. It's time for an eight clap. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. U-C-L-A. U-C-L-A. Fight, fight, fight. Let's go. Craziness is almost upon us. Let's go. Let's go. Go hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Thanks for the support. Keep liking, downloading, commenting. For Locked On UCLA, this has been the end of the show. This is Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins!